one of our favorite questions we get at Ag PhD all the time is, what's the right corn planting population? Boy, if we only knew that answer from year to year, we, we would have uh, more yield, no doubt about it, more yield and better performance out in the field. And more Here, profit, that's yeah, what I'm most concerned about. Well, here, here's the thing. Okay, your planting population is gonna depend on just a number of different factors, including fertility and the type of soil that you're in, the moisture conditions, and of course that hybrid that you're planting. Okay, so everybody knows that already, but let's talk about some general rules. Let's start by looking at some of the highest yielding farmers in the world. What are they getting for number of bushels based on a planting population? Well, what we want to do is multiply times 10. So if let's say we've got 50 in thousands, so 50,000 planting population, times 10 is 500. So a lot of the highest yielding guys that are getting 500 bushel corn, they're planting roughly 50,000 population, so 10 to 1 is the ratio. All right, so let's convert that over to my farm. If I'm planting 30,000 plants per acre, 30 times 10 is 300. I should be averaging 300. Well, Darren, how come I'm only averaging 200? Well, there's a lot of reasons for that, Brian, but, but certainly, yeah, we're not, we're not reaching what the genetic potential is of that corn. And it's something to think about for your farm. And I know I talk to guys all the time, well, I'm getting 200 bushel corn. Maybe I should bump my population up to 40,000. And many times when that happens, we have disasters out in the field. We don't need that much population to get 200 bushel corn. Hey, I want to talk about those disasters. I can speak from first-hand experience here, lodging gets to be a real big issue. Before you go bumping planting population, we want you to make sure that you have looked thoroughly at your soil tests and you have fertilized appropriately for many more plants per acre. The number one nutrient is potassium. So if you've got less than 4% base saturation K, there's not a chance in the world I'm going to tell you to bump your planting population. Now if you're at 6% or 8% base saturation K, you also have good levels of manganese and copper. I'm going to say, yeah, you probably could bump your planting population. Your plants should be able to support it. All right, let's talk about this hybrid thing real quick because it's important to understand what hybrid you have and what its tolerance to population changes are because we see one farmer plant at 35,000 and he says, yep, hybrid A is way better than hybrid B. And then another farmer planting at 25,000 says, I don't know what you're talking about. Hybrid B is way better than hybrid A. Some hybrids are going to have more of a fixed ear, and when you've got more of a determinate uh, fixed ear type product, you've got to go with that higher population. Now, what is high population versus low? That depends on your soils and where you're at. So in your area, if a high population is 34,000 for the rainfall that you get and the types of soil that you get, then 34,000 is a high population for you. But in other areas of the country, they may say 34, that's kind of a low level. Our high population is 42, great then you may push more towards 42 if it's a more determinant ear for your area. Here's the big thing we want to leave you with today. There is no right answer. You don't know what it's going to be, and I can promise you, you're going to have variance from acre to acre across your farm. So what we talk about a lot of times and what we do on our own farm is vary the population. Try planting three different populations in the same field. For that matter, even maybe plant two or three different varieties in the same field. Each at different populations. Well, now you've done everything you can, I shouldn't say everything, but you've done some of what you can to help spread the risk on your farm because you just simply don't know what Mother Nature is going to bring you this year. But like Darren talked about, you do know with certain hybrids, they are a little bit better at higher populations, some are a little bit better at lower populations, so certainly weigh that into your factor. This is also another opportunity to use satellite imagery on your farm. Uh, I know like with Farmer's Edge, for example, you can look back multiple years back to see, okay, on a drought year like 2012, for example, where were the areas that showed up on our farm? And yeah, those are the areas that are real sensitive to moisture stress. We can cut back population in those areas. And then the areas that thrived, even on years that we were extremely dry, hey, here's where I can really push my population. So you may get some ideas based on your farm and which years you saw certain stresses. The most important thing and the most important word that Darren just used there is you. It really all depends on you. You're gonna have to run some of your own trials and figure this out yourself and then take dollars and cents into account. Almost every seed corn company is gonna encourage you to plant a higher population, but with that higher population comes a higher cost. So if you can gain more yield and you can gain it cost effectively, great, do it. But if you can't, then you're gonna have to stay where you're at or possibly even cut back on population. It's never been easier to vary planting population as you head across your fields and across your entire farm. This is something you need to do a little trial work as Brian suggested so you can start making more yields on your fields, 
and more profit each season. Well, one other way to make more profit is by controlling our weed of the week. We'll show you how to do that coming up next.